Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to mix and color match a matte finish. So we're gonna start off with our flattening binder here. This instance, I'm using the Chromax brand AU175. Make sure you always give it a really good stir because it seems to settle to the bottom. There's a lot of powder that seems to go down to the bottom and if you don't stir that properly, you'll actually be changing not just the color that you're doing now, but the future colors. Once you've got the flattening binder stirred up, you gotta decide the level of flatness that you're looking for. So a rule of thumb that I usually use is 40% flattening binder to 60% clear will give you a semi-gloss finish. 60% flattening binder to 40% clear will give you a satin finish. And 75% flattening binder to 25% clear will give you a full matte finish. I also like to mix it up by volume, not by weight. So for instance, if I was to mix up four liters of flat clear, I'd be putting three liters of flattening binder in to one liter of clear, not three kilograms to one kilogram. Because the flattening binder is heavier and you'll just end up with funny amounts of paint left at the end. But look, it really doesn't matter. As long as you get the desired flatness and the uh, finish that you're looking for, it really doesn't matter how you mix it up. As long as you know what you've done to reproduce that. So for this video, I'll just be showing you guys one of the mix that I've done and this mixture here was 60% I wasn't quite sure how it was going to come out so I did one and then I did a couple more spray outs later on and I'll show you all of those three spray outs that I got so you'll be able to see the difference in the uh, overall finish from 40 to 60 to 75 percent flattening binder so once you've mixed it up you've still got to put your hardener in on top so i always do the all those ratios that i was telling you guys about before that was all pre-hardener so you you make your batch of unhardened clear and then you put your hardener to suit on top uh, in this instance, I'm using a two to one clear. Most clears I found are two to one. However, there are some five to one and three to one clears. Yeah, there's some funny ratios and you'll just have to do some experiments to find out exactly how that's gonna work for you if that's the case, if that's the kind of clear that you're using. I've been told by a few people that you're better off using slow hardeners when you're using matte clears because the active ingredient in there basically is talc. So those powders, um, they rise to the top and if you give it that little bit longer to rise to the top, you've got less chance of having the color mottle. So you might think just uh, flat or matte finishes are really easy to paint because it's something that anyone can do just in their garage with some aerosol cans to make it actually look good. It's actually probably, I would say, diff more difficult than painting just your normal clears. So they can mottle and you can get wet patches. And as I was saying before, a wet patch will actually be more glossier than another. So um, when I painted this car here, I made sure that I bolted all the panels up and that way I wouldn't have any color difference from panel to panel. I would imagine weather would also play a big part in uh, the gloss levels as well. So if it was really warm, I probably would be using the slow hardener. However, it's pretty cold here at the moment. So I decided that standard harden would be all I needed. Look, there was a few little parts, just a few little miscellaneous um, door handles and stuff like that. I used fast hardener on it and they went fine. It's more so if you're doing a big panel, you don't want any uneven patches in that you'd want to use that slow hardener in also very important to make sure you strain it like filters because I've used some of the standoc stuff before and also the glazerit stuff and you can strain it and strain it and strain it and it always just ends up with these little high spots these little lumps and there's nothing you can do about it so this DuPont one or the Chromax sorry it is actually a good flattening point if you're having troubles maybe just go and give the Chromax stuff a go AU175 so there you go, there's the three different um, gloss levels. Um, here's the Tirana when it's finished off. So that's 75% flattening binder, 25% normal clear, uh, and then mixed at its two to one ratio, no reducer required with the standard hardener. I'll make a quick mention too, just before we finish off, that you can put uh, flattening binders into 2K solid colors as well. So just in single stages, 
and I've included a little bit of just a couple of photos at the very end here of a trailer that I did. I wouldn't really want to be going anything above 40% for uh, your 2K because you're going to be losing uh, coverage as well because it's see-through, it's obviously clear. So anything above that and you just get to the point where you have to put too many coats on, it's just not worth it. So you'd be better off using clear over base. So that's this one here. That's just a bit of Nason 2K direct gloss and I put 40% in that so we've got a bit of a um, semi gloss finish so that one came up quite nice hope you guys enjoyed watching this video thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production